Hello everybody. In this video, I'm going to teach you guys how to use and take full advantage of a Garmin Nuvi 200-205-255-265 uh, GPS unit. This is the GPS unit. It's nice and small. Fits in a pocket or in your purse and it's packed with features that will amaze you it's a very nice unit so first thing how do we uh, turn it on there's a slider switch on the top right here that you slide this way to turn it on and the charger goes on in the back right here and let me use a different camera to show you this is where the charger goes like that and this is how you turn it on you slide the switch but now it it's automatically turning on as soon as you plug it in it will automatically turn on this is where you put the memory chip for maps or map, map upgrades or maps of different countries and this is the holder this section sucks to the windshield or if you have a glue sticky glue uh, platform you can put it on your uh, dashboard just like I did on the table you put the little sticky glue platform which is usually sold separately but that's how it is it has a sticky in the back you put this on your dashboard and you suck it on that or you could put the suction on the windshield okay so that's how you mount it that's how the unit mounts once the unit is mounted the first thing you need to do is you need to customize the GPS based on your specific needs everybody's needs are different so I'm gonna explain what do I mean by that go to tools go to settings in settings go to system in system GPS simulator has to be off because it's the simulation of GPS signal for indoor use but you don't need that if you're dr driving so this always have to be off the GPS simul simulator comes in handy if you're entering a tunnel or going in to underground streets where the GPS uh, the satellite signal is next to zero or nothing so the GPS will assume the vehicle speed and position based on the initial entry speed before the GPS signal was cut off so it will assume that so it's usually off but it gives you an idea and the usage mode is very important if you want to uh, use it in automobile uh, there is one setting for bicycle and pedestrian it's different for example if you choose bicycle settings the unit will not uh, take you through roads where bicycles are not allowed same thing with pedestrian for example with bicycle it's not going to take you to the freeways and uh, uh, highways and with pedestrians it will not take you where in roads or streets where there is no uh, footpath or pedestrian sidewalk so those are the things that it will take in consideration based on your selection okay uh, unit of measurement all over the world you have to they're using uh, un the measurement uh, is in metric system or kilometers for distance meters and kilometers for distance and but except for the United States where we are using miles so if you are in the United States you have to change this to miles but this unit will be used in Europe so kilometer is what it is okay now we go back and choose navigation and navigation the preferences uh, is currently set to faster time however you could change this to shorter distance less fuel or off-road I'm going to explain each one faster time will take you to a route which could be longer but it will take you to highways and freeways where the speed limit is higher and you will get to your destination faster if you choose shorter distance it will might take you to small alleys and roads with less distance to travel but full of red lights for uh, full of stop signs speed bumps and full of uh, roads with very very slow speed limits so it will take you to a shorter distance but it will take you to your destination much later okay less fuel 
will take you th uh, through routes where the elevation of the road doesn't change too much. For example, your vehicle doesn't have to fight gravity and go uphill and then downhill to get to the point. It tries to keep your, dis your, your route into one level to save you fuel. Off-road is only if your vehicle cannot legally go to regular roads. Uh, for example, you have a dirt bike, you cannot take the dirt bike into roads, uh, then you have to choose off-roading, okay? All right, so avoidance is currently enabled, but you have to choose it and disable it. Now I'm going to explain each one. U-turn, whichever box is checked, that's what the avoidance will enable. For example, if you have a big uh, truck, or a semi truck or a, or a big RV or a bus you cannot make a U-turn it's impossible to make a U-turn with a semi truck so you have to avoid U-turns if your vehicle is not allowed to go to highways you have to avoid highways if you're traveling alone um, if you if you're um, if you're traveling without cash or credit card you have to avoid uh, toll roads uh, traffic you cannot avoid unless you have a traffic receiver which is sold separately so unless if you do have then you avoid uh, traffic it will take you th through the routes where the traffic is minimum based on the current traffic condition ferries you know little ships that or little boats that take your um, uh, your car from one side of the river or one side of the lake to another side so that's what you're going to use to avoid so basically, you avoid ferries if your vehicle is too big to board a ferry. For example, a, a truck or, for example, a uh, bus or motorhome. Okay? If you're traveling alone, you want to avoid carpool lanes because you'll get a ticket if you're alone in a carpool lane. So you want to avoid that. And you will avoid unpaved roads if your vehicle is not equipped to go to unpaved roads. For example, you have a low rider. You cannot go to a dirt road you know those are the things you need to know so that was avoidance all right okay so display display is currently set to brightness at 50 percent you can change that daytime and nighttime nighttime makes the screen darker so it doesn't reflect too much on your eyes automatic will change it automatically based on the time of day when it gets dark it will automatically go to dark when it gets bright goes to bright auto is very good to choose but I'm choosing daytime right now because I'm shooting this video okay uh, time time it's important to choose if you want uh, uh, 24 hours like a military style where at 1 o'clock uh, p.m. is 13 and 2 o'clock is 14 and whatnot or you want 12 hours where it shows a.m. and p.m. and also uh, the location your current locations time it's automatic it will detect the signal and tell you what time it is but you could change that okay so let's go back language language there are three different things in language you need to pay attention this is very important voice language is the language that GPS will guide you for example it tells you turn right turn left in English language that's the voice the guidance language the text language is the language of the menus for example back is in English B A CK restore is in English all these are original English languages that's the text language keyboard language is the language at which you enter the address this you must change even if you're an English speaker if you're an English speaker you must change the keyboard language if you are traveling to a country which is not using English alphabet for their street names for example if you're traveling in in Russia they're using Cyrillic alphabet so you have to change it to Russian keyboard otherwise you cannot enter an address same thing with other countries where they, they have different alphabet for their street names, like Greece and uh, I don't know, like there are a lot of countries in the world that don't use Latin alphabet. And for that, or, or even in Germany or, or other European countries where they use alphabet with like uh, little accents on them, you, you don't have that in English keyboard. So you have to change the language. Like in France, you have to cho choose a French keyboard because the letters have accents. And uh, English alphabet doesn't okay so that's important to know okay so that's map uh, language okay map map uh, the detail of map always choose I like to choose most but you could choose more normal or less if you choose more it shows a lot of information on the map little alleys and streets everything will show up uh, if you choose most if you choose more uh, then major streets will show up alleys will not show up on the map unless you're actually driving on that alley 
and uh, uh, normal, even lesser, uh, it will not show streets unless you're driving on them. And uh, if let's say if you're traveling in, in the freeway on on the freeway, if you're traveling on the freeway on to the right and left side of the freeway, all those little streets and homes will not show up if you choose normal. But if you choose most, it will show up. And if you choose less, it will completely ignore all the roads and street, all the streets and only shows major roads. So of course, I like to have it in most because I want to see everything. All right, so the map uh, view three-dimensional view uh, is the best but you could have it show track up uh, if you sh show track up wherever you're going uh, it will be on top of the screen if you show show if you choose north up uh, uh, only north will be up but the problem with north up is if you're traveling south well, your car will be moving this way and if you want to make a right turn your car will go this way because you're going south the right turn would be this way but the, the screen, uh, even though the car will be going right, the physical vehicle will go right this way. But the screen shows as if it went this way. It's very confusing. So either choose 3D or track up. 3D or track up, not north up. Not recommended. Okay, I'm going to choose 3D. Okay. So vehicle. You can change the vehicle. There's so many vehicles you can download free of charge from Garmin's website. Currently that's the vehicle you have or a couple of more vehicles but the blue one is chosen. Trip lock shows where you have been already. So if you've traveled to a road and you're going in circles you you wanna you don't want to hide trip lock because it shows if you were there already but it will kind of clutter the screen so that's the reason I'm hiding it. I don't want too many lines on the screen. Okay, and, and this is something very important. Let me go back to map. If you have more than one map, uh, you, it's good to disable the map that you're not using to uh, save some uh, memory of the GPS internal memory and make the GPS speed faster. For example, this GPS, it has Europe and it has North America. So, Eastern United States and Canada. So, if I'm in, in the United States, I would like to uncheck the European map so the GPS can run faster so it doesn't have to load those maps every time when I don't even need them but if I'm in Europe then I'm gonna uncheck the North American map so it doesn't have to load so those are the things you need to know to uncheck the map that you don't need to use and leave the map that you're using okay um, so that's map info uh, trip log okay, we went through that security Garmin lock is something that you want to use if you want to put a pin password on the GPS unit. It's a good feature, but if you forget the pin password, you must be in the location where you set it. Otherwise, you cannot unlock it, and basically your GPS is trash because you have to send it to Garmin and pay a fee and whatnot. So, I recommend leaving the Garmin lock off because if a thief wants to steal your GPS from your car, they're going to steal it anyways. They don't care if the Garmin lock is on or off. They don't even know if it's on or off. They're going to steal the valuable from your vehicle. So what difference does it make if they were able to use it or not? So I don't know. It's up to you to decide whether you want the Garmin lock off or on. But it's a headache. It's a pain if you forget the PIN, the password. Um, now, if you set up the PIN in a location, let's say in your house, if you forget, no problem. You come back to your house, it will unlock automatically because it will sense the signal, GPS signal that you are in your house. But what if you set it up in a foreign country somewhere where you cannot go there again? And you set a password and you forgot the PIN. That's when your GPS is just a doorstop. It's a brick. Okay. Safe mode is important to turn on if you don't want anybody to enter an address when the vehicle is in motion. So if you turn it on, the GPS will not allow you to enter addresses when the vehicle is in motion. You have to pull, pull over on to the side of the street uh, to a complete stop before it will let you enter an address. If you turn it off, it will let you enter an address even if the vehicle is moving. Now I have it off because every time uh, my wife who sits next to me will be entering the address even if I'm driving. Uh, so that's why I set it to off. But you know, if you're a, if you want higher safety, make sure you turn it on. Okay. 
let's see that's uh, proximity point is very important to, to know proximity point let's see what's installed in this gps it has uh, garmin safety cameras now uh, let me explain about this a little more in detail uh, what is garmin safety cameras uh, alert garmin safety camera alert is uh, as you drive throughout different cities in the world especially especially in europe there are all kinds of cameras that will take your picture if you're above the speed limit and there are cameras that will take your picture if you cross a red light or other traffic violation now if you leave that box checked the box that i showed you if you keep this box checked the gps will warn you before you approach that camera like a mile or maybe a kilometer before you reach it will warn you that there is a um, camera approaching and you need to be aware and you will slow down and, and, and make sure you don't violate the, the law now obviously you always want to obey the law and not violate the law the laws are there for us to be safe on the streets and on the roads however uh, uh, sometimes uh, there are hidden cameras in certain areas for the very reason to generate revenue for the city so that's why uh, even though if you if you go a couple of miles above the speed limit just a couple of miles it's very hard to maintain your speed limit deadly accurate if even if you're a couple of miles above the speed limit the camera is gonna flash on you and take your picture and guess what if you're in a foreign country and you rented a vehicle they will charge your credit card the rental car company will charge your credit card for that ticket so there is no don't think that if you're in a foreign country and the camera flashes on you you're okay because you don't live there so here's a, that's something you want to know uh, and also it's legal it's not illegal to have that in your vehicle except for france if you're in france having a, a safety camera alert on your gps is completely illegal but in, in the united states canada other countries in the europe it's legal to have that and garmin is selling it legally online all right let's go back okay so these were uh, basically the the settings now where am i obviously it tells you where you are it tells you the uh, long longitude and latitude gps coordinates and whatnot and uh, help is obvious you can get help you know different topics help topics echo route you have to enter your vehicle specifications in order to get help from echo route it tells you uh, you know which route to take which is more fuel efficient and economical for your vehicle and picture viewer it's a self-explanatory if you have pictures in the gps it shows you this gps doesn't have any other pictures than stock photos that comes from garmin but you know you could have picture viewers my data this is very important these this is this will clear your trip lock wherever you have been it will be cleared when you clear this this will delete all your favorites this will set your home location or delete home location okay now here's the deal why would you want to clear clear your trip lock that's if you want to sell your gps online or if you want to give it to a friend as a donation or something donate it to some charity organization you have to delete your favorites you have to clear your trip log and everything you don't want a complete stranger who will have their hands on your gps or you gave it to them or, or buys it from you or gets it free as a donation you don't want them to know where you live where have you been your relatives addresses and all the places you've been to basically that's why you want to clear personal information that's where my data goes now world clock tells you the time in different countries if, if Tokyo is 1104 London is the time in London New York will be 10 or 4 p.m. and all that now this is only accurate if we are outside with GPS signal reception if you're indoors this is not accurate okay now calculator this is simple it's a calculator you know just like a cal simple handheld calculator um, unit converter is very important and very accurate except for uh, currency conversion because the conversion you can you can convert distance you can convert speed temperature volume uh, weight area currency okay area of course 
how how many uh, square kilometers is uh, in one square mile right you can find that out currency how many euros is a dollar but this is not accurate because it changes all the time distance it tells you for example if you're buying something uh, from a foreign country and uh, let's say, let's choose distance if you're buying something from a foreign country that says it's uh, 40 millimeters and you need to know how many inches it tells you 15 inches now you could enter the inch 58 inches it tells you how much is it in millimeters so it works two ways okay okay now how to use the GPS for navigation to enter an address you click where to address spell the city in the country if you want to change the country right here you change country let's say we are going somewhere in France put F and R France will come and then you can change the city let's say Paris they, they don't say Paris they say Paris Paris something like that so you go P A R I S Paris done there you go Paris you need to choose the zip code next to it anyways so that's how you enter the address from uh, manually if you want to go home you click here you enter your home address if you want to go to points of interest the points of interest will show where you are for example wherever I am right now it when I click to this and I say I want to go to a restaurant food all foods it will give me the list of foods that are close to me based on where I am currently I'm indoors and the unit thinks I'm in Chicago so that, that it doesn't help so if you want to spell you could spell let's say I want to go to Starbucks I go S T A R B U C K S done so now it's gonna give me the list of all the Starbucks close to my current position now you see the the list of Starbucks that you see here some are one mile some are 0.3 miles 0.1 mile 0.3 or actually that's a kilometer whatever but here's the thing which one is better for you to go to don't think the one that the closest one is better don't think that you need to look at the information after the distance which is southeast southwest east northwest and whatnot if you're headed if you're driving and, and you want to look for a Starbucks you want to go to a Starbucks which is in the same direction that you are traveling anyways even if it's down the line and very far compared to the one that's closer because if you're headed this way and the Starbucks will approach you a mile later is much better than to go half a mile this direction to get to a Starbucks and then come back half a mile and go back to your route that's why look at this information and see that the direction you're traveling to and choose that one okay so that's how you choose points of interest by name fuel it simply shows you all the gas stations you click on it and it shows you where is the nearest gas station 7-eleven this and that all the gas stations transit self-explanatory uh, lodging hotels shopping for shopping ATM and bank parking all those things are based on your present location for example if you click parking it shows the parking that are near you where you are okay same thing with tourist attraction community auto service if your vehicle breaks down so all those things are self-explanatory okay so that was points of interest now recently found is very important recently found shows the list of the places that you have been to already for example if you're going to a new place um, and, and you like that place and you want to go there again and you don't know what the address was you could find it in recently found favorites very important if you're traveling in a foreign country wherever you go in in that place if you have to come back there save it to your favorites as soon as you get to that country save the airport to your favorites as soon as you get to your hotel room save that hotel room to your favorites as soon as you get to your 
business meeting room or wherever the meeting is for your business or a relative's house where you have to go back and forth mul multiple times, save it to your favorites. So you can go there again and again and again without having to enter the address every time. Intersection is very good for countries where the addressing system is not accurate and you have to punch in the address by, by the person will give the address by the intersection of crossing roads. For example, they say, my house is close to Broadway and First Avenue, like this, Broadway and First Avenue. So it takes you to the center of that intersection because the addressing system is not accurate. Extra is something you buy from Garmin, so it's not in there right now. It's an it's extra feature. And uh, cities, all the cities where you close to where you are, if I click on it, it will show me all the cities near uh, Illinois, so that's Chicago, uh, Oak Park and whatnot and browse map this is easy you click on the map and you like a place you zoom in let me zoom in so this is okay okay so here let's say if I want to go right here you just click on and click go now you want to zoom into that place and you want to zoom in more and see something you like. I'm going to zoom in more so I can see points of interest. Let's see. Zoom in. I want to see points of interest here. No businesses there. There's a school bus. So that must be a school. Okay, so there it is. There's a restaurant. There's a gym. You see that little workout, workout thingy? I click on that. It's, uh, it says Ashton Place. It's uh, Okay, no, it's not that one. That's not a gym. I'm gonna go to the gym. Get fast. That's a gym. So if I want to go to that gym, I click go. If I want to go to that hotel uh, or a restaurant, it's not a hotel. It's a picture of a bowl of food. It's called uh, Malahini Terrace. So you click go, and it takes you there. So where is this? This is all in Chicago. See. Negative, negative, negative. I'm zooming out. There you go. That's Chicago. The vehicle is supposedly in Chicago based on this map. So that's Chicago right there. Okay. So that's how you browse map and go to a destination. Coordinates is very important. Okay, this about the coordinates. Uh, in a lot of countries, the addressing system is complicated and very hard for foreigners to enter because the alphabet is difficult and some street names are too long. Like when I was in, in Italy, the hotel gave me the GPS coordinates for their hotel. So what you do is you click coordinates, you hit uh, longitude and latitude, and you have to make sure that north south or west and east is correct these are very important make sure they're correct and then you put the degrees the second and this uh, minutes and seconds and whatnot and you will it will get you there now this is very important because just this information uh, is enough to get you to the point that's the like horizontal and vertical address of any point on the planet earth can be given with these points so basically, just like you're doing mathematics, you have X and Y axis like this. So any point has an address. This is the coordinates of the planet Earth, which you enter, and the vehicle will guide you there and take you there. You don't need to enter street names, country name. You don't have to enter anything. Just these two numbers, these two sets of numbers will give you that address. You could have a coordinate uh, address of your house. Just go outside and see what the coordinates are by, by clicking where am I. Uh, I showed you earlier. Let me show you that thing. This one. Where am I? You click on it, it shows you your coordinates. Obviously, this is not correct because I'm not uh, in Chicago, but I'm indoors, that's why it's not showing correctly. So, that's why the coordinates is very important not to take that for granted. So, basically, yeah, basically, I guess we covered everything. This is a volume control. You can make it louder or you can mute it if you don't want the sound at all. And uh, that's all.
I hope this video was uh, educational and you learned something. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. I appreciate your time. Thank you.